tonight, a case of the coronavirus confirmed in San Antonio. And as the number of cases continues to rise, researchers are trying to find ways to slow or cure this illness. Plus, after a years long battle, the fire union has a new contract with the city. Thanks for joining us for the news at nine. I'm Myra Arthur. The first case of the novel coronavirus confirmed in Texas right here in San Antonio. The patient is being treated in isolation at Methodist Hospital Texan in Balcones Heights. This person is among the evacuees from China in quarantine currently at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Health officials say this patient is stable with mild symptoms tonight. The CDC says the threat of public exposure remains low. There are more than 63,000 cases of this virus across the world. More than 1,400 people have died from the illness. Most of those deaths have been in China. There is an urgency right now to find a cure for the coronavirus. Researchers in Texas and across the world are working quickly to try to find a vaccine or any tool to slow it down. Patty Santos talks to a Texas Biomedical Research Institute expert about what that will take. This is what the live coronavirus looks like. Now scientists across the world are studying it and recreating it in labs to figure out a way to stop it or slow it down, but it could prove to be difficult. No one was ever able to develop a good model for SARS. And this virus looks very much like SARS. Dr. Jean Patterson at Texas Biomedical Research Institute says the facility is in line to receive the live virus and begin their own efforts to find a cure. If we have an animal model, we can use it in the three things that are most important, which is diagnosing treatments, an antiviral or a vaccine. But finding a vaccine could take years. What people will probably do is they will try to repurpose drugs, drugs that we know are effective against viruses. She says using already FDA approved drugs could speed things up. 250 miles away, scientists at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston have received a live sample in hopes of creating a vaccine. But without public funds available, progress they say could be slow. Well, it's really hard to predict, but I assume that people will start getting some promising results with a year. Through teamwork and sharing of information, Dr. Patterson is confident the science community will get it done. What we're trained to do is to put the skills we've developed and, and you know, we've been doing this for many decades and we got this. This is what we do. And she says if a drug looks promising and worth trying, the patients who currently have the virus could serve as test subjects in what's known as compassionate use. In the past, the Texas Biomed has done work in finding treatments for Ebola, the Marburg virus and the Zika vaccine. Myra. All right, thanks, Patty. So how did we get to this point? The coronavirus has spread quickly. It was only at the end of December that cases of pneumonia were first detected in Wuhan, China. At that point, the virus was unknown. About a week later, Chinese authorities confirmed they had identified the virus as novel coronavirus. Then on January 11th, the first person died from the illness, a 61 year old man in Wuhan. Ten days later, the first U.S. case of the virus was confirmed. And today we learned that the first Texas case was confirmed, again right here in San Antonio. So what exactly is the coronavirus and how can you protect yourself? We spoke to Washington Post health and medicine reporter Lenny Bernstein to help us understand. A coronavirus is actually a family of viruses. And they're called coronaviruses because when you look at them under the microscope, mm -hmm. they have little spikes coming out of the edges, uh, which looks sort of like a crown or a corona or the sun's corona. You've heard of the MERS and SARS viruses. Those are types of coronaviruses. This one currently spreading in China hasn't been recognized before. The current thinking is that it was a virus that was typically in animals, uh, maybe bats, maybe some other animals, and that it jumped to humans. So it has never before been seen in humans. Health officials believe the animal to human transmission likely happened at a market in Wuhan, China, where live animals were being sold. So what are the symptoms? Think flu. Starting at the mild end, they can be sneezing, coughing, fever, aches, and then as you get down towards the more extreme end, you're getting, uh, uh, you're feeling like you have pneumonia, um, difficulty breathing. The virus spreads through droplets, often someone sneezing or coughing and someone else breathing in those droplets. 
Similar to the flu, people with a weakened immune system, especially older people, are most at risk. People in the United States are in no imminent danger whatsoever. You don't need to walk around wearing a mask. You don't need to be worried about that other person in the bus or on the subway with you. You need to wash your hands. You need to take the kinds of precautions you take with the flu. Don't go to work if you're sick. You need to be aware. Things can change and they can change quickly. There is a lot of work being done right now to get a better understanding of how this virus works. We'll bring you any updates as they become available. The search ends for a missing six-year-old girl, but now authorities are investigating two deaths. A toddler nearly drowns with a crowd of people around him. And new evidence suggesting the BP oil spill years ago was worse than originally thought. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. The search for a six-year-old girl who disappeared Monday afternoon in South Carolina has come to a tragic end. It is with extremely heavy hearts that we are announcing that we have found a body that the coroner has, has identified as Faye Marine Sweat. The case now being investigated as a homicide. No arrests have been made. The body of a man was also found during that search. The local man accused of killing his wife and hiding her body in court this morning for pretrial conferences between prosecutors, his lawyers, and the judge. Andre McDonald is facing murder and tampering with evidence charges in the January 2019 death of his wife, Andreen. The objective of today's meeting was to establish a schedule for his trial. Once that pretrial stuff is resolved, we're on to a trial. For now, it looks like early summer. A two-year-old nearly drowns at a hotel pool in Michigan. With more than a dozen other people around, a toddler struggles to stay afloat before he sinks to the bottom of the pool. About four minutes later, a young girl notices him. Then we see one of our heroes, a nine-year-old child that has seen some of this, go over to her godmother. The girl's godmother gets into the pool and pulls the boy up. Nurses who were at that same hotel for a convention jump into action and perform multiple rounds of CPR. The boy did end up going to a hospital, but was released the same day. The boy's mother was at the pool at the time. We don't know yet if she'll face any charges. Cibolo police investigating a messy attempted burglary at a CVS this morning. Police shared this video from the scene. It shows the driver of a truck backing into the CVS, smashing through the doors. Then you see two people run through those doors. They then wrap a chain around the store's ATM. When they realize it isn't long enough, they run out and drive off. A new study says the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico was far bigger than originally estimated. The spill happened after an explosion and fire at the Deepwater Horizon oil rig in 2010, which dumped about 170 million gallons of oil into the Gulf. But according to a new study, some of that oil was invisible to the satellites that tracked the spill, and the spill itself was about 30% larger than originally estimated. BP has not publicly commented on this study. Meanwhile, BP has pledged to reach net zero emissions in the next 30 years. It's part of a plan by the company's new CEO to transform the legacy of the oil giant. Details limited, but the aim is to cut greenhouse gas emissions from its global operations and emissions from the oil and gas it produces by 2050. Scientists say they found evidence of a new population of humans that lived about half a million years ago in West Africa. Researchers say the ghost population of ancestors may have mated with ancestors of people living in what is today West Africa, and that could explain the genetic diversity within modern West African populations. Take a look at this amazing photo of two mice fighting over crumbs captured in a London subway tunnel. It took the photographer nearly a week to get this shot, but his patience paid off. It won him a prestigious wildlife photography award from London's Natural History Museum. Members of the inaugural class at LeBron James I Promise School in Akron, Ohio, got some amazing news this week. All 193 students learned they're receiving full scholarships to Kent State University. Kent State is guaranteeing free tuition for four years, as well as one year of free housing and meals. To stay eligible, the students must remain in good academic standing and perform volunteer work locally. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com.
Oh, well, good evening. Hope you had a wonderful Thursday. Beautiful day today. Definitely a bit cool in the morning, but we warmed up very nicely this afternoon. Here's a look at your high temperatures across the area today. 60 at the airport in San Antonio. Our average high this time of year 67, so a bit cooler than average, but it was still really nice out there. If you were outside under the full sunshine, felt really, really pleasant. We're going to keep the nice weather going for a couple more days, and if you've had the itch to wash your car and you didn't get out there today, you're still fine to do it tomorrow even through the weekend. We don't have any chances of rain over the next several days. We'll pick up some more clouds as we get into the course of the weekend, uh, even some morning fog, especially as we get into Sunday morning. Uh, but overall, next couple of days, still a good chance to wash your car. Rain chances will hold off until very early next week with the arrival of our next frontal boundary. It's nice and cool out there right now. 46 at the airport, 44 in Bulverde, 41 at Bernie stage, and our temperatures still have about 10 degrees or so to fall tonight before all is said and done. So with sky staying clear, winds light, the air is very dry. That will allow our temperatures to fall into the low to mid 30s tonight. We'll be close to a light freeze here in San Antonio. I do anticipate a light freeze up in the hill country overnight tonight. Tomorrow afternoon, another nice chance to warm up. We may actually be um, in some spots, a couple of degrees cooler tomorrow than we were today, but it's still going to be really nice out there. Sunny skies, a high temperature tomorrow afternoon, right around 60 degrees. Winds becoming easterly tomorrow afternoon. A nice south wind will settle in on Saturday. That will kick back in the humidity through the course of the weekend, but really no humidity tomorrow evening for date night or heading out with your gal pals or even just hanging out and cooking some dinner at home for Valentine's Day. Uh, it's going to be a really nice evening tomorrow. Skies will be staying clear. We'll be getting cool, though after sunset our temperatures will start to drop off pretty quickly so 52 at 8 p.m. down into the upper 40s as we approach midnight tomorrow overall a really nice day for Valentine's Day on Friday. We'll talk more in detail about the weekend coming up as well as when you can expect the return of some low end shower chances that's coming up in just a bit Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. There was a new option to fly from San Antonio to Monterey, Mexico. Viva Aerobus will offer non-stop flights between the two cities on Mondays and Fridays, beginning on June 26th. The flight will depart San Antonio International at 8.15 a.m. According to the airport, over the past two years, the demand for travel to Monterey and the Nueva Leon region has grown by more than 21%. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. Here at home, an announcement years in the making. The San Antonio Professional Firefighters Association and the city of San Antonio have finally reached a deal for a new collective bargaining agreement. The new five year contract includes lump sum payments and pay raises for firefighters, but no back pay for the five year period. They went without any raises. There's also a new health care plan that will require firefighters to chip in more. Both sides say they're satisfied with this new deal. From our perspective, this arbitration is the best we've ever seen from the city in six years. Okay. And it's not from the city. So we want to thank the arbitration panel. And frankly, I'd like to think it's the last time we go through it. Um, I think it's appropriate to negotiate directly with our employees. But uh, we went through the process as approved by the voters, uh, met all of our goals, um, and, um, and believe uh, it's time to move on at this point. 
This is the latest chapter in a fight that's been going on for nearly six years now. It comes after failed negotiations, court battles, a charter amendment campaign, and finally arbitration to help the two sides reach an agreement. In case you missed it, we put together an explainer on how we got to this point. This has been going on since 2014. You can read that right now on ksat.com slash news at nine. San Antonians will have a chance to vote on whether to continue providing sales tax dollars to pre-K 4SA. The city council voted to place the issue on the May 2nd ballot. Pre-K 4SA runs four centers around the city that offer free and reduced price kinder pre-kindergarten education. It also offers professional development for teachers and provides grants that support students in other programs. More than three quarters of the program's funding comes from sales tax revenue. Back in 2012, voters approved the one eighth cent sales tax for pre K 4 SA, but the current tax expires in 2021. Results from the first bare facts case at Rivard report poll found that 68% of likely voters support extending that tax. 651 people were interviewed for this poll. You can read more about that right now on KSAT.com. And if you need help keeping up with all things related to any of the 2020 elections, KSAT News at 9 has you covered. Our Vote 2020 newsletter goes out every Tuesday. You can sign up for that right now at KSAT.com slash newsletters. Turning to tonight's top stories, our planet just had its hottest January on record. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced Thursday that it was the 44th consecutive January with temperatures above the 20th century average. 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit. NOAA reports Earth's four hottest Januaries have all occurred in the last four years. President Donald Trump's national emergency declaration at the U.S. southern border will stay in effect for another year. The declaration unlocked billions of dollars in federal funding to build a wall along the southern border, bypassing Congress. National emergencies typically expire after one year, but the White House submitted a document to the Federal Register for continuation of that emergency. Active shooter drills have unfortunately become a normal practice in schools in the last 20 years, and the second largest teachers union in America wants them to stop. The American Federation of Teachers says these drills are traumatizing students. The group recommends an approach that doesn't involve students. They also recommend that information regarding the drills should be given to parents ahead of time, and the content of those drills should be created by a team that includes mental health professionals. The Department of Education says that during the 2015-2016 school year, roughly 95% of schools drilled students on lockdown procedures. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo has become a tradition for many local families. But how much do you know about how American rodeo as we know it began? Alicia Bonetta visited the rodeo fairgrounds to learn about a new event that some consider to be the grandfather of rodeo. It's tonight's Throwback Thursday. Mark your calendars and buy your tickets for this Sunday, February 16th. For the first time in San Antonio rodeo history, a Mexican charreada will take place. Don't try to compare it to what you're used to when you see American style rodeo. It's not based on timed events and scores like that. Everything is style and pageantry and grace and technique. The sport is called charreria. It originated in Mexico and dates back to the 16th century. It's all about the riders roping and ranch skills, but also the escaramuzas the women in the sport of charreria that combines strength and beauty. We've done a lot of field trips. It's important that we do it right. We want to embrace the culture and the heritage of our city. That's exactly what we're doing by bringing this event. The Rodeo's Horse Show Committee says this event has been three years in the making, all to ensure they pay tribute to Western and Mexican culture. Our goal is to do sight, sounds, and smells. That's what we want. We want you to be just like you're walking into Mexico to one of the Lianzas there where they perform these, these chariadas. We're going to have mariachis. They're going to perform live. The Chariada San Antonio will start at 5 p.m. this Sunday at the Expo Hall Rodeo Fairgrounds. For more information on ticket prices as well as all rodeo events, head over to our website, ksat.com.
romantic date night, dancing feet, and a family adventure. We have a variety of events for this edition of Valentine's Weekend Picks. I'm Alicia Barrera. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou? Well, apparently he's over at the Tobin Center starting February 14th. Ballet San Antonio presents one of the most iconic but tragic love stories of all time. The show runs until this Sunday and tickets start at $24. Put on your dancing boots and two step on over to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo to see some music stars. It's ZZ Top and Keith Urban this weekend at the AT&T Center. This Friday, the Texas trio ZZ Top will bring down the house with their classic rock and blues hits at 7 p.m. Ticket starts at $36. And Grammy Award winning country star Keith Urban will have two concerts on Saturday. Show times are 1 and 7 p.m. and those tickets start at $73. Want to encourage your family to be more active and play outside? Well, the Woody Museum is the place to be this weekend. Science and technology become one in their new interactive exhibit, Backyard Adventures. The educational displays will showcase brand new ways to discover the outdoors, experience a flying bee's eye view, backyard sports, and many more fun activities. The adventure begins on February 15th and runs until May 3rd. For more on these events and everything happening around town for Valentine's Day weekend, you can head over to KSAT.com. For The Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Hey, we stopped by the Witty today for a look at that new exhibit for our Blake's Brainiacs. It looks like so much fun, so be sure to check that out. But if your plans this weekend take you out to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo on Saturday, maybe going to see Keith Urban. You know that's going to be a good show. We'll see more clouds around on Saturday. Could even be trending mostly cloudy as we get into the second half of the day. Temperatures Saturday afternoon in the mid-60s. Notice that wind, though, shifting around to the south. We've had a northerly wind in place the past couple of days, hoping to keep us a little bit cooler and drier. But over the course of the weekend, our winds will become southerly. That'll help to increase humidity at the surface, and generally we'll just have more cloud cover around 65 Saturday up to the mid 70s on Sunday, and some morning fog does look likely as we get into Sunday as well. Warming trend will continue into Monday. Look at that, pushing 80 degrees by Monday afternoon next week, but more changes right around the corner. Looks like we'll have our next front move through um, sometime on Tuesday. Models still disagree uh, by about half a day or so on exactly what time that front will come through and that makes a big difference because that's when we'll start to see a bit of a cool down. Uh, but you see the trend that takes us into the middle and back half of next week. Another very cool, uh, even cold trend there as we get into next week beyond President's Day on Monday. So enjoy tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful. You saw your date night forecast for tomorrow. Absolutely wonderful Saturday. More clouds, bit more humidity getting downright warm and humid as we get into Sunday. So morning fog will be possible Sunday again on Monday. We'll hold off on rain chances until Tuesday. There's that front. We'll keep you updated on the timing of that front over the next several days, but rain chances next week do not look nearly as good as what we saw first half of this week. Looks like just some uh, isolated showers for the most part through the middle part of next week, but clouds hang around and look how cold it's going to get mid 40s for high temperatures, a possibility by late next week. Have a good weekend. Let's go to our website right now to find out what's trending tonight with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, uh, we are affectionately, lovingly calling this the uh, Valentine's Day trending segment. Yeah, there okay. we go. Nice heart. <laughs> Um, and first of all, let's start with the story that just keeps giving here. Um, this story about the, the zoo and naming the cockroach and the rat to uh, feed to uh, the other uh, vermin that they have there. Naming a rat or cockroach yeah. after your <laughs> ex, right? Yes. People are paying to do this. Yes. And then watch that critter be fed. Absolutely. It's going to be live, live streamed. Um, a lot of people. And this it's so crazy to me how much national attention this it story has, has gotten. It has been everywhere this week. Yeah. Um, even sports host Jim Rome had a few things to say about it. He said that actually the bar has been raised <laughs> by the San Antonio Zoo as far as uh, ways to get back at your ex. Stephen Colbert had it part of his monologue. Uh, Trevor Noah, he had some funny things to say. He joked that those who actually do this probably deserve to get dumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, CNN has had this yeah, this week. It's right. just blown up. Yeah, it definitely has. So uh, credit to the San Antonio Zoo. They, this is a pretty cool idea uh, that they have here, and it's gotten a lot of good attention for the zoo as well. So, um, but for people that are interested in doing this, still they um, they're still allowing you to do this. And again, as Myra mentioned, it will be live streamed. So this is all happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, okay. yeah, so it'll be a live stream. Valentine's Day mm -hmm. watching <laughs> a cockroach 
named after your yeah. ex. If you're into that sort of thing, cool. Said, <laughs> All right, uh, moving on here. We're sticking with the, uh, I kind of called this earlier like the hater's guide to Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, so we got Galentine's Day, and we know that uh, a lot of people are celebrating Galentine's Day tonight, uh, Thursday I know. night. Yeah. I, I guess I didn't know Galentine's mm -hmm. Day was the day before Valentine's Day. Right, so I don't think a lot of people knew that as well because there are a few places here that had stuff for tonight but are also doing stuff tomorrow. So okay. here we go. Yeah, a lot of places doing some interesting things. Um, Lil Woodrow's having an event there, an anti-Valentine's Day event. A lot of singles awareness events going on. If you're just on. not feeling the love, <laughs> there is something for you to do tomorrow as well. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, Bowl and Barrel, this one's pretty cool. It's a Shred Your Ex event. You could actually take your photo of an ex oh. to the bowling alley and have them uh, shred it there. So I, what's going wow. on? A lot of weird stuff. That is, I mean, eating the yeah. cockroach with mm -hmm. the same name yeah. is on one level. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the shredding of shredding, your image yeah. is uh, Yeah, it's a little more... bit different, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so a lot of stuff going on. Head over to our website to check out some of these last-minute things. If you're still looking to do something for Valentine's Day. All right. Okay. All right, now on to a, a good Valentine's Day story here. Um, this is pretty cool. This is a story that's been trending throughout the day, and <laughs> it is about um, an interesting creation here. Uh, I like the headline, Flowers are old news, so send someone a bouquet of pickles. Okay. <laughs> a bouquet of pickles. Is that a yeah. jar of pickles with a bow on it or something? Here it is. Oh, Look wow. at this guy. Yeah, this is pretty impressive. So we have all the all the fixings here. Uh, and this is probably the perfect gift for the pickle lover in your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this thing is so popular that this company that's doing it, Grillo's Pickles, I hope I'm saying that right, they've actually sold out for online orders. Oh my goodness. But what's good here is that they've given you a step-to-step -step guide on how to get a pickle bouquet oh, done. You can DIY yes. this <laughs> yes, if you, you need can. to. Wow, okay, so we've seen yeah. like things like, you know, edible arrangements right. and mm -hmm. candy bar yeah. bouquets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now the pickle. We're, yes. we're stepping it up. San Antonio, they, I know that there's this is a big pickle town here so uh, I think this is a uh, pretty interesting story and pretty interesting uh, creation kind of something different yeah yeah of just going to the gas station there you go one of the giant pickles <laughs> present yeah. them nicely there you go yeah um, we have all this information on our website as well ksat.com all right happy Valentine's Day there you go <laughs> thanks RJ we'll <laughs> thanks, be right back That is all our time tonight. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9. Have a good night.